and drug. Adidas two and drug. In three. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, little technical problem. So now this middle ear has two communications. One is with the nasopharynx, and second is the mastoid air cells. <coughs> Now the next, how it is formed? If you are looking the cavity of ear properly, you can find there are six walls of the middle ear, like a room. Each and every room has roof, floor, anterior wall, posterior wall, lateral wall, and medial. Wall. In the same sense, middle ear has this roof, this floor, this anterior wall, this posterior wall. This one is the medial wall. And in front of all these, which is open, and that is the lateral wall. So these are the boundaries of middle ear: roof, floor, anterior wall, posterior wall, medial wall, and lateral wall. Now my role is to proceed each and every one, each and every wall of the middle ear. Now start with the roof. Roof is the upper part of the middle ear. Roof is the upper part of the. Now listen carefully. All these walls are made up of thin bone. And the role of wall is to separate the adjacent structures from the middle ear, so that cavity can remain safe and all structures also can. Now the portion which is at the upper, which is at the upper, it is a roof, and this roof is again made up of a thin bone, and this roof helps to separate. This roof helps to separate or work as a partition. Between the cerebral cortex and the middle, ear. between the cerebral cortex and the middle ear, this cerebral cortex, and we know the brain is covered with three layers. Those are called as meninges. So these are the meningeal layers. This is the cerebral cortex. See, these are the meningeal layers. This is the cerebral cortex, and this is the middle ear. So the roof helps to separate the um, cerebrum from the middle ear. Now the next, in the same sense, the floor. Let me let me con uh, just a sentence about the roof. As the roof helps to separate the cerebrum, and it is a it is a um, it is made up of a tegma. So it is called as tegmental bone. Now the second is floor. Floor is again a wall which is working as a Partition between, which is working as a partition between a vessel, between a vessel and the middle ear. What is that vessel? The vessel which carries impure blood. The vessel which carries the impure blood, and that vessel is jugular vein, and it has bones. It has veins, jugular vein. So this wall. Which is working as a partition between middle ear and jugular vein, but in natural, it is also termed as jugular wall because it is working working as a partition between jugular vein and the middle ear. Now the first is tegmental wall, that is the roof. Second one is your jugular wall, that is between jugular vein, that is between jugular vein and the middle ear. Now the third and third is the anterior wall, which is toward the anterior side. Suppose we are thinking the middle ear in my in my body. If I am thinking the middle ear in this position, so this is lateral, this is medial, this is anterior, this one is posterior, this is roof, and this is floor. Now we are talking about the anterior wall, means front side of the middle ear. So anterior wall of the middle ear, there is again a vessel. Toward the anterior side, there is again a vessel 
and that vessel is a vessel for pure blood see at the lower portion there is vessel for impure blood at the anterior aspect there is vessel for pure blood and that vessel for pure blood is is carotid artery so now the carotid artery is going like this this is the way of carotid artery and this is the anterior wall means anterior wall helps to separate this is the anterior wall which helps to separate the carotid artery from the middle ear now which thing is separated from the middle ear the carotid so what could be the name of wall but natural the carotid wall so this is the anterior wall which is also known as carotid now if you are looking carefully here if you are looking carefully here you are getting something and just we talk that middle ear has communication at two places one is toward the anterior aspect and one is toward the posterior aspect the communication toward the anterior aspect is with the narrow nasopharynx by means of a tube by means of a tube and what is the name of that tube eustachian tube so middle ear is having communication with the nasopharynx by means of a tube and that is called as eustachian tube one more thing one more thing is there there is one muscle there is one muscle which is the muscle for which is the muscle for which is the muscle for tensing the tympanic membrane so that tympanic membrane can get tense at a place and that that muscle is called as tensor tympanic muscle so this is the place for that now as the carotid artery is passing just attached with the just attached with the anterior wall but natural it give a branch it give a branch for the middle ear and this is the small opening if you are looking this is the small opening for that branch of the carotid art and one nerve is there greater petrosal nerve so these are the structures which are related with the anterior wall and the main structure relation with the anterior wall is is tubal canal it is the main part and the anterior wall separates the middle ear from the carotid artery now the next one is opposite to the anterior that is posterior wall so posterior wall of middle ear has again communication anteriorly there is one communication with the Uh, nasopharynx and posteriorly it has communication with the mastoid ear cell mastoid ear cell and that communication is by means of a part which is called as adductus to mastoid antrum so this is communication with the posterior wall now now if you are looking carefully with the posterior wall we are getting few structures there we are getting few structures there are now the words of few things which you are not able to remember you are supposed to ratify those structures are if you are looking carefully here uh, a thing is that it is pyramid it is a pyramid if you are looking carefully this canal and a pipe this canal and a pipe this is the canal for this pipe or this wire and this wire is called as fascia now at the time at the time we are reading two topics simultaneously we are we are talking about the middle ear and but natural we are we are getting the knowledge of fascia nerve are you getting if if just if i am observing the figure i can say that fascia nerve is coming from medial wall and it is going to the posterior wall of the middle ear now these are the things one is a prominence of semicircular canal one is a canal for fascia nerve and second is a pyramid and why this pyramid is if you are looking carefully something is there it is a structure which is there and this structure is a muscle for the ossicle of the middle ear we will talk later so this is about the lateral um, your posterior wall posterior wall shows prominence of semicircular canal facial canal and pyramid now the next wall is 
medial wall these two walls posterior and medial wall are utter important in the middle ear these two walls because medial wall is communicating the air with the inner ear medial wall is communicating the air with the inner ear and posterior wall is communicating the middle ear with the mastoid process now this is the medial wall this is the medial wall this medial wall shows two main openings two windows for my home two windows for my room and one window is of oval shape and second window is of round shape so the end of window which is oval shape window which is oval shape is called as oval window or in other word it is also known as fenestra vestibule now this is the new word fenestra vestibule fenestra vestibule is a window which is of oval shape whereas there is one more end window which is of round shape and it is known as fenestra cochlea so the window which is of oval shape is fenestra vestibule and the window which is of round shape is fenestra cochlea now why these windows are there as we know this is tympanic membrane the sound bombard here then the ossicles are there we will proceed with the ossicles in next few slides then the ossicles are there all three all these three ossicles are communicated with each other and then the sound which is bombarding on the tympanic membrane is supposed to vibrate the ossicles and ossicles are supposed to send those vibration frequencies to the inner ear to the inner ear now direct communication of this is at the oval window that is fenestra vestibuli with the smallest ossicle of the middle ear that is trapezius now why round window is there as it is having communication with the fenestra vestibuli then why there is fenestra cochlea this fenestra cochlea as we know the vibrations and this vibrations create the sound now this sound is transferred to the inner ear by means of fenestra vestibuli but there is need of something some stimulation to vibrate the basilar membrane of cochlea a part of inner ear for hearing so these vibrations are transferred to that round window and that round window is covered with again a thin membrane again a thin membrane and that is that thin membrane is called as because it is just just opposite to the tympanic membrane that thin, thin membrane is called as secondary tympanic membrane so round window is covered with a secondary tympanic membrane which is vibrating and ultimately stimulating the basilar cells of the cochlea basilar cells and hair cells and all and then conduction of the sound that extracranial nerve vestibulo cochlear nerve so this is the importance and now the ossicle is very small which ossicle this stapedius it is very small ossicle so this ossicle need some prompt fixation and this fixation is provided by a muscle for whom the muscle is for that ossicle what is the name of ossicle stapedius so the muscle for that that ossicle is what natural called as stapedius muscle so this is what about the medial wall now the last is lateral wall because lateral wall we can't see we can't see in this in this diagram because it is a box and that lateral wall we opened the box and so we just separated the lateral wall now you can see the lateral wall in this in this figure now this is what the lateral wall look carefully about the lateral wall if you are looking carefully at the lateral wall you are getting you are getting it is made up of bone again but you are getting a oval shaped a oval shaped partition or thin plate is there and that oval shaped plate is called as 
tympanic membrane so above, above this there is external layer so lateral wall has tympanic membrane and that tympanic membrane is attached with one of the ossicle one of the ossicle of the middle layer and that ossicle is called as malus m i s among m i s one ossicle is attached with the tympanic membrane and that is called as malus so the tympanic membrane get vibrated ultimately vibrate the malus those vibrations are reaching to the incus and from the incus they are transferred to the stapes and ultimately to the ultimately to the inner ear now my role is to observe the figure carefully if i am observing the figure carefully i am getting it is a room having a drainage pipeline having a drainage pipeline at the floor means impure 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 things are carrying and that is deoxygenated blood carrying vessel that is jugular vein having a fever pipeline at the anterior aspect of the room and that is called as that is called as carotid artery having a boss or the master control at the roof at the roof and that is cerebrum and having a fresh air from the posterior aspect that is the mesoesophageal anterior so if you are remembering the figure this figure carefully you will write or you can write the things in a proper way now the next is the contents of middle ear so middle ear contains three things one is ossicle second one is nerves and third third one the muscles the middle ear consists three ossicles and those are malus incus and stapes these are the three ossicles which are the contents of mid middle ear and which are working as a conducting part of the middle ear now a nerve which is passing through the middle ear that is facial nerve and two ossicles which are by the side the center ossicle there is no need of special support for the center ossicle but the two ossicles which are by the side they are in need of a support and that support is provided by two muscles to one side there is ossicle a small ossicle that is trapezius and this trapezius is supported by a muscle that is trapezius and the second ossicle that is malus and it this ossicle with the tympanic membrane it is supported by a muscle that is called as tensor tympanic muscle so that tympanic membrane get tense now proceed one by one i will proceed with the first ossicle that is the malus if you are looking the image carefully you are getting that malus has a head you are getting the malus has a head malus has two processes lateral process and anterior process one head two processes and the main and important thing of the malus is articular facet because in the middle ear there are two joints in the middle ear there are two joints one joint between malus and incus and second joint between incus and stapes so that these three ossicles they can remain in a position and the joints between malus and incus and the joint between incus and stapes both the joints are synovial joints and head and socket ball and socket type of joints so these joints now the joint between incus and the malus joint between incus and the malus here the incus is playing main role incus is playing main role we up to up to the time we talked about these two ossicles which are those malus and stapes but now incus get little irritated irritation and that incus is requesting to give the name of joints starting with its own name first and so the joint between incus and malus is called as inquilo malleolar joint a sweet name to the incus inquilo inquilo malleolar joint and one more joint is there the joint between incus and stapes inquilo stapedius joint so these are two joints which are formed between three ossicles of the middle ear 
now this is the one no sicker look the shape of a sicker keep the figure in your eye yes observe the figure again i mean to say and now if you are observing the figure you are getting this malus has head has a lateral process has anterior process and one articular facet now if the articular facet is there with this surely there is need of articular facet to next ossicle of the middle ear that is incus now we will proceed with the incus now look carefully the incus this is the shape of incus and easy to draw if you are practicing two to three times you can this is the shape of incus now if you are looking here incus has a body then there are two crus one is short and one is long crus of the incus and naturally articular facet this articular facet articulate with articulate with articulate with the malus now one more thing is there lentiform process one more thing is there lentiform process and this lentiform uh, form process is for the articulation between incus and stem so this is about the incus now the last ossicle or third ossicle a smallest ossicle but very important ossicle of the middle ear and that is stem so this step is it is it is like this not like this it is two limbs are not parallel it is like this so that there is little tilt of the foot plate and it can fit at the fenestra vestibule so if it is like this now if you are looking carefully one limb is there and second limb is here now if you are looking carefully one limb is long and second limb is short so this is the one limb anterior limb this is the posterior limb see it has its head head is attached with the neck below the neck there are two limbs and lastly those two limbs are rested on a plate on a plate who is resting foot so what could be the name of that plate foot plate anterior limb and posterior limbs are attached with the neck and the foot plate now this foot plate is going to fit at the oral end of so be but sure the shape of that foot plate is oval shape it is a oval shape foot plate so these are the three ossicles of the middle ear one is malus second one is incus and third one is stems now one more important content of the middle ear is the facial very not key danger na since the beginning up to the end the facial nerve is showing its own impression hmm. at the beginning we you know it is taking origin from brain stem at the beginning it is supposed to leave the brain stem in a straight way but no mm -hmm. first of all it is going back then taking turn around the nuclei of the sixth cranial nerve that is the to mm. then turning around to the nuclei and leaving the mid brain in your brain stem pons after leaving the pons it is entering in the internal acoustic meatus then passing through a special road a special canal made for this special nerve and that is a facial canal okay up to this ab to seedha chalo nahi hum nahi chale no 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 now it is reaching at the root just passing over the root of middle ear reaching at the anterior aspect of the root and then suddenly taking turn see again a turn suddenly taking turn at the genicular ganglia suddenly taking turn at the genicular ganglia and now passing attached to the medial wall now passing attached to the medial wall of the ear let me now this is the course now from here the nerve is coming it is coming and coming and coming now at this place it is taking sudden turn direct 
sudden turn going back at the top of a medial wall it is passing through a canal but naturally the name of canal is facial canal now no satisfaction even passing through the canal no satisfaction again that nerve need to turn are bas ho gaya dada and again the nerve is going down reaching to the posterior wall see reaching to the posterior wall then passing with the posterior wall and lastly leaving the skull at the stylo mastoid foramen at the stylo mastoid foramen and now while passing at this level while passing at this level we you know this is pyramid and from here here is the stapes from this pyramid there is a muscle to the stapes and that is called a stapedius muscle so this is stapedius muscle request the facial nerve please supply me and a motor branch from the facial supply the stapedius nerve now if there is something wrong with the facial nerve if there is something wrong with the face in sense of paresis or paralysis surely the stapedius muscle get involved and that leads to cause paresis or paralysis of that muscle and what is the role of stapedius muscle stapedius muscle helps to fix the stapes bone so that it can control the vibrations of that stapes bone now here the paralysis means the muscle is not able to control the vibration and so the stapes get irregular or fast vibrations and that leads to cause hearing loss so this is what the muscle and nerve facial then it is leaving the skull and giving five main branches and all things you are doing so this is what about the facial nerve now friends see how wonder it is and how best it is we we we, we are talking about the middle ear and as it is a content facial nerve is a content of middle ear even 50% of the facial nerve we complete 50% of the facial nerve if, if there is question then my question about the facial nerve in anatomy you should do the same study the topics which are in relation with each other and those topics will help you better to understand both now the next muscles of the middle ear and as we know there are two muscles of the middle ear one is the stapedius muscle and second one is tensor tibial sirtum ha huh? sirtum s yes, stand for stapedius and p from tum stand for tensor tympani muscle so these are the two muscles of middle ear hope so you understand the lecture properly and now if you are if you are having any queries but for this purpose you are you are supposed to observe the figures in anatomy it is much important you can ask the queries if you have okay. okay. हेलो मैम आई एम वेटिंग फॉर सम क्यूरीज फ्रॉम योर साइड सर व्हाट अगेन द फीलिंग ऑफ क्लासरूम सो फॉर एनी टॉपिक ऑफ एनाटॉमी यू आर सपोज टू ऑब्जर्व द फिगर्स यू आर सपोज टू ऑब्जर्व द फिगर्स एंड इन दिस इन दिस in this topic also 
if you are if you are able to remember this figure carefully or if you are trying to draw the figure this figure now while answering the middle ear it is a question for 10 mark while answering the middle ear you should start with the introduction of middle ear what it is where it is located uh, how it is separated um, from external ear and the inner ear and this is i uh, having a cuboidal shape and all now after that you are supposed to draw a small figure you are supposed to draw a small figure uh, that this figure which one the shape and size of the middle ear you are supposed to draw this figure this figure the prime important this i present in front of you and figure of three ossicles with this you should write the haploid anatomy you should write the nerve supply and blood supply of the middle ear thank you friends hope you enjoyed the class thanks thank thanks. you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir dhanyawad sir i need a few comments from you what you are feeling about and if any queries are thank there, you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you